Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The City Social with Walter Smith and Alex Hilton joining me once again to um, hopefully cheer up some blues after last night's uh, shambles, polite shambles, I'll put it that way. I've just woken up, by the way, literally 20 minutes ago, as you can see the sleep in my eyes, and I was a little bit late to join these two uh, this morning. Do you sleep in that city shirt as well? <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, sadly, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm a fully new kind of sleeper guy, Alex, but uh, <laughs> you didn't know, didn't you? <laughs> as I know, as yeah. I know. <laughs> of course you know. Um, Swansea away, good old days. Um, just for disclaimer, that's just not true. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so today we're going to look through that. Are you still all right? Are you still guys all right? I, I it's funny that you actually brought up on an occasion where I did see you naked. I thought that, that was Paul you saw naked, I think. I, I think well, it was. I was going to say, I don't know anything about this. We went to Swansea Way and Alex decided to jump into Paul's bed and spoon him. It was good times and Paul was very upset. <laughs> I, I fucking loved it. It was great, great comedy. So, once again, no one is simply rising. They have no idea what we're on about. But um, homoeroticism is all I'm going to say. Anyway, there was a lack of that last night on the pitch. Uh, what was it? I don't know. But Manchester City last night obviously lost to Southampton, and it was very frustrating. And today we're trying to pick, pick through the bones of that game, really, and see um, where we went wrong, uh, what should we be concerned over, and all the usual stuff, basically. Alex, we'll go to you first. Um, I guess I'll go for that first question. Kind of what went wrong last night with Manchester City? Do you know what? I, um, I don't think it did. I think it's okay. one of those games, and this happens, to, this happens to all big clubs and it happens to all teams that play like City do, is you're going to get one of those games every now and again where you just don't break through. Um, McCarthy was amazing in goal, made some cracking saves, a few one-on-ones. Uh, I think uh, Stevens like, cleared off the line like almost twice. Um, we yep. created 26 attempts on target. Uh, no, sorry, 26 attempts on goal. Uh, we had something like 75% of the possession. We, we, we battered them nil one. You know, it's one of those. How many times have we said that this think, season, though? How many times have we said that this season? So, it it things, when does it become once. a problem? It has happened more than once. I, I think the issue is we don't have... Um, when Sergio Aguero is off the pitch and, and De Bruyne doesn't start, we don't have a talisman. We don't have someone that... Um, just gives you a goal. You know, th- those sorts of players. And I think we're, we're, that's something we're missing. There was somebody on Twitter, who, who, I think, asked you, funny enough, I think it was a conversation with yourself, uh, talked about signing a player like Danny Ings. Uh, great sides. The one thing that we've missed as a club for a long time is a poacher. Someone like Javier Hernandez at United. Hernandez was not necessarily a great player. Some would say not to the standard of Manchester United when they're at their absolute peak. But he, he scored one in three goals, almost always coming off the bench the sort of player when you're having these kind of games you can yeah. throw him on and he'll just know where to be at the right place and poke it over the line we've missed that and I think it's you still on Charlie Austin it. by the way <laughs> yeah 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 I mean all right we had a big joke about me saying we should sign Charlie Austin but Charlie Austin's a physical player that's got a one in two record everywhere he's been you know yeah. exactly the sort of player that City have G- great sides need that it's why Dimo Origi's at, at Liverpool the sort of player that he very rarely starts but he's starting to get into a reputation where it gives him a different option late in a game and he has scored some big goals for him we don't really have that sort of player I don't think Jesus is that sort of player I think Jesus is a, a project that will become an out-and-out first-team all-round yeah, yeah. star striker eventually. Um, and beyond beyond that, the sort of player that we need, we, we don't have a lot of big personalities in the dressing room. And I think we talk about how much we miss Vincent Company defensively, but players like Zabaleta and company were the players that really drive the team on to get over the line. Uh, you know, I think Yaya Torre as well was one of those players that at 70 minutes, he's got something special in him. We don't really have those sort of players in the squad. I, and it's fine. We don't need them because we normally batter teams. But one game in, in 20 or so, you will just get a really frustrating 1-0 away at a well-organised team. So, well, I'm going to be the devil's advocate here because basically City have lost nine games this season now. That's that, that's like more than United and Arsenal. We've lost an awful lot of games in the league. Um, and um, I guess we all probably stand differently in terms of how much of a squad we build that we need. Do we actually need? But where do you stand on this? Like, do you think City need quite a few changes this summer? Because um, obviously we're discussing striking issues here, but there's also centre back issues potentially. Some people talked about left back issues. Uh, did last night's game suggest to you anything new that Manchester City might need? Well, you look at uh, City's game and you look at the squad and you think how much rotation went into that. You know, you had um, 
pretty much a whole new back four, you know, besides Laporte coming in. You had Fernandinho, who was uh, playing in a different position. And <laughs> we all wanted him back in that position, but then he looked like a player who had not played that position maybe for a year. Um, yeah. Left back, absolutely. We need a left back. Um, you know, Liverpool went out and bought, is it Robertson? Yeah. And he, he, he was the man for them, you know. And if we can go out and get somebody who doesn't cost you, we don't need to go out and sign 50, 60 million pound players all the time. Kulabali, I'd have him in a, have him in a heartbeat. I would, I know we didn't play last night. Uh, Ottomendi and Stones, I wouldn't mind seeing the back of both of them. Really? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Ottomendi, I would have got rid of him two years ago. Uh, my whole reasoning for it is we want to be the best team in Europe and to become the best team in Europe we've got to go out and get a squad that is competing against the best and Stones and Otamendi we all want them to well, Otamendi's past, past it now in terms of age but Stones we all wanted him to do well we've all given him the backing but he's ultimately let us down um, who else was there last night? I still think we need a defensive midfielder. Fernandinho's come okay. to the end of it. Rodri, I'm not overly sure about. Um, Interesting. He, he still hasn't convinced me. So, it was a strange one. I was watching it last night, and normally for 1 0 down, 10 minutes to go, I'd be pulling my hair out, biting my teeth, you know, just pacing up and down the room. But I, keep get, I can't get it out of my head that all these Premier League games that we're playing. They're all just training matches up to the yeah. big occasion. Of the, you know, if, if we lose for the rest of the season, we'll probably finish second. If we win every game for the rest of the season, we're going to finish second. These are just training matches for the Champions League. Uh, we haven't got a great deal to play for. In terms of the way we played last night, I thought we played... Pep's going to be happy with the way we played last night. I'm telling you now, because everything was pretty much beautiful. It reminded me... Do you remember when um, Peter Crouch got that gold? against us for Stoke I'll never forget it just it. <laughs> well it was, it was his one once in a career and I think that, that's that, that's exactly what happened last night you know you look at the movement last night you look at the the triangles the pass 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 it was all there apart from in their box and that's where I mean they had like they called it a, a red and white wall they just crammed that box and you could see Pep telling everybody you know you need to go wide you need to go wide and try and cut it back in. But I mean, I, I was looking every time we went across the ball, there must have been 10, nine, 10 of their players in there. Yeah. Alex, so, think, go on, go on, Alex. Sorry. No, I'm just, I, just, I just think the idea that we, we, as City fans, we are miles more critical of the City squad than any other fan base is at looking at our players as well. So I know you were talking about Bernardo Silva going, or not Bernardo Silva going, but we need to have a conversation about this form. Yeah, we do. So I might leave that over to you guys. I mean, just to jump in there, I think there's a couple of things that you said. Uh, I, t I certainly agree as well. I think we're about not scoring last night. You've got to look at the two team talks back to back. Like Southampton basically secured their place in the Premier League. They're not really in the relegation battle, but think of the two team talks. Ralph Hasenhutl saying, you know, we get a result here, we're definitely staying up, our season sorted and we're over. Versus Manchester City where it's a training match. So I think in different circumstances, we would have won that game 4 or 5 nil. I think Walter's completely correct when he's saying that City fans criticise their players. But can I remind everyone, we're not having a bad season. Like, we finished <laughs> second to Liverpool. Liverpool have been immense in the league this year, but we're Bucky's favourite for the FA Cup and we're Bucky's favourite for the Champions League. We could still do a, a treble this season. And everyone's talking about, you know, we need, to, we need to get rid of these players and we need to rebuild this squad. Stones and Otamendi, everyone's saying they're not good enough. They were Centurions last season. Uh, John Stones is 26. He started 24 league games in the Centurion season. That, to me, is pedigree of quality. And season before, if we're, being, if we're being finicky. Say again, sorry. Centurion's season before, wasn't it? Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But e either way, either way. You know, yeah, okay, yeah. He's, well, yeah, he's a Centurion and he's a triple winner. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, so, yeah, the argument stands further. You know, Ottomendi, we talk about Ottomendi like he's in his 50s. He's 32. As a centre-half, he's still got a couple of years in him. I, I do agree. I think Ottomendi has been a liability at, at times. But this idea that the City squad isn't good enough, it's poo. 
<laughs> yeah, but I guess at some point um, we all know. Like, there's the, and once again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here because someone has to ask these questions. And I guess uh, I'm hosting this video, so I will do. But largely, um, we we know that City Squad is about to change exponentially. So basically, David Silva is going. Fernandinho, we can't deny that his age will catch up to him. I mean, he is 35. Aguero's injuries could catch up to him. All of a sudden, there's three players of a massive heritage at Manchester City. We, we haven't replaced him as a company. I think we'd all admit that. We haven't replaced him. You can't lose someone like him and expect that yeah, burden of responsibility to fall on an old, an old defensive midfield in Fernandinho and a young centre-back in Garcia. So there are some issues there. That, and I think, to be honest, as much as you would, you're right to say that maybe... Um, we are we are doing well this season in terms of we are probably going to win a couple of trophies and whatever. Um, if you still look at last season, we're still kind of if you consider where we are from based on this time last season, we were we were exactly the same uh, in all competitions, but we were um, much higher in the Premier League if that makes sense. So we were yeah. as far in all the cup competitions because we were still we, had, we were playing Spurs at this point I think at the competition. Um, and we were doing much better in the league. So we basically were par in the cup competitions at the moment, but we have dropped off hugely in the Premier League. So I guess the question is, is it just an acceptable drop off for now? Um, but how do we stop that for next year is what I will say. Like, um, so Alex, yeah, how do we prevent uh, another season like this with nine league defeats? Do we change anything or do we just write it off as one season where it was unlucky? Um, I mean, you've, you've always got to look at improving the team and where we can go. And I think yeah. that... Liverpool is a monster that City created because we, we pushed them yeah. so far and it was almost like City couldn't keep up with the standard we'd set. You know, there, there was always going to be a point where we had almost perfection. You're going to have to come come down slightly higher than that. Do you know what I mean? Like, to, to, put, to put it to a comparison, like you saying Bolt broke the world record for 100 metres, but yeah. he doesn't run that, at that speed every time he runs 100 metres. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, what was it? 9.68? Off my head, I think 9.68 at the Olympic yeah. Games, but then in the world championships, it might be like 9.75. You saying Bolt doesn't go, Oh, bloody hell, I've got to go back to the drawing board, I'm not good enough, how do I improve? <laughs> you know, it's kind of go, I'm still the fastest man in the world. You know, I sort of see it like that with City is we, we had like this amazing special season, then we, we matched it the year after, and then this year we've just fallen away a bit. And I think you are yeah. right, Fernandinho, we do need to find some sort of long term replacement because he's not going to be. Um, he's not going to be around forever. Uh, Foden has come in and looks like he might be the perfect replacement for David Silva and hopefully he will continue yeah. to develop and get to that standard. Um, and yeah, Aguero won't be around forever. But I would like to see us talk about those transfers and not replacing players like Zinchenko that's had, is a young player that's had one or two dodgy games, but overall this season has been great. And he, I think, could be the future of Manchester City in that position and is so ready-made for a pep team. We're talking about replacing those players and we're not talking about who's going to be the next Manchester City number nine in five years' time. Walter's shaking his head there. You're not convinced as much about Zinchenko? I'm not convinced by Zinchenko. You've got, there's, there's other factors that have figured in this year. Um, I mean, Laporte went down. Uh, Sane went down. So that's two world-class players that we've, we've had to go yeah. without. and They weren't replaced at all. Vincent Company had left not replaced and the player in some respects I think we missed the most was uh, Fernandinho um, for the simple reason being we missed his um, I might to call it skullduggery in, uh, <laughs> in midfield you know yeah. because we put him in the back four so you're taking arguably the best defensive midfielder for a couple of years in the world and moving him into a back four um, he's got to learn that trade he's, you know, he's got to learn you know when to push up where if, Basically, he's got to try and relearn a whole new position. And he has done well. But we want to be the best team in Europe. So we should have had a quality centre-back there. Fernandinho with Rodri rotating and learning. So Rodri wasn't in the team as much. He'd be learning off Fernandinho. Sane, how many times did he break it? If it weren't for Sane's goal against Liverpool, Liverpool would have been centurions and gone the whole, ski whole season undefeated. Yeah. So we're talking about fine margins here. Uh, Zinchenko for me, never good enough now. Uh, Otamendi for me, I think this is a chance, especially with the market the way it is. Um, because, I mean, we had to let Leroy go for what, 50 million? Not even that. And I'm sure Real Madrid paid pretty much 100 million for Hazard. And he was in yeah, the final year of his contract lot, yeah. as well. So we're, we're, after this pandemic, we're kind of getting into this whole new territory. So we might be able to 
snap up some bargains, as it were. You know, we don't have to spend that 60, 70 million every time. We can go in and offer 30 million, and there's clubs that are desperate for money. So they'll, well, they'll take it. There was talk this morning from uh, David Ornstein, the journalist of The Athletic, former BBC guy, saying that, that Leon Bailey is a winger we've been linked to quite a lot by Leverkusen. And the talk now is, because you, as you're saying, because of the market, like normally a winger from Bundesliga, you're looking 50, 60 million, uh, allegedly only 20 to 30, you know, so which is for Manchester City, that's, that's pocket change, isn't it? Um, obviously, a few clubs <laughs> will be into it. I, I do actually think we will see, um, and not, not as a reaction to this game, but I think, I think just because there are some questions to be answered, I do think we will see some changes this summer because um, uh, Guardiola's comments actually were quite interesting. I think he said, um, I, think, I think he said last night, the line that fans have been saying how certain games seem to be summing up our season. He said something like, he said a Spanish word for it, but basically he said we've been disappointing in both boxes once again. And it must be quite frustrating. I mean, to me, the, the, the box that I'm more concerned about, weirdly than defensively, is the, um, the attacking one. Because I think largely, uh, we make a mistake a game, we can concede as a goal, but City still should be scoring the chances we create three goals. So it shouldn't really matter if those mistakes shouldn't matter. So that's how I feel about it. Um, I want to move on to Bernardo a little bit, because um, I know a lot of people have different opinions on this. Um, Alex, like, where do you stand um, with Bernardo's form this season? Because I'm not saying he's been truly terrible, but he hasn't been the Bernardo of last season. And um, I'm just salivating the idea of a fully fit Bernardo with Felden and Sterling and De Bruyne. But for whatever reason, he's not been there. Um, what do you put this down to? Is there, is there anything in the whole tweet you know, sort of scenario back in September? Or is there more to it than that, do you reckon? I think, uh, if anything, I thought the tweet would have a positive effect on Bernardo Silva, which it sounds, it sounds strange, but that whole siege mentality, yeah. there's definitely something developing at City. And I think it is rife with Bernardo Silva as well. Um, but it, it, everyone hates us. And it, it reminds me a little bit of like Mourinho's Chelsea. There's a bit of a narrative that comes out of the club that everyone's against us. And we, as fans, definitely propagate that. You know, there's lots of people who say, you know, oh, every, the Premier League want Liverpool to win the league, blah, blah, blah. And the way that Bernardo Silva himself talked about the Player of the Year awards and said that a Man City player will never win it because they don't want us to, I think... Yeah. All of that contributes to the idea that definitely certain players at City, and I think the squad as a whole, think that the world's against us. So when it suddenly it's, it's turned a big out too complex that, almost a little bit. Yeah, when the media were sort of... I mean, what Bernardo Silva said was incredibly insensitive and what he did was insensitive, but it obviously didn't come from it, any sort of racist intention. And the way the media tried to spin it, that there was this rift at Manchester City or whatever, I thought that would have a positive effect. It would make the squad kind of rally around together. Um I don't think Bernardo Silva's form has been as bad as everyone says it. No, I, I agree, it, agree. It's just... I think it, since Liverpool won the league, I think a lot of certain sections of the City fans that almost want a scapegoat and they've started looking around and going, is it Bernardo Silva? Is it Zinchenko? Is it blah, blah, blah? And I, I don't think it's bad as it is. I think what also affects Bernardo Silva is that he plays every position and it must be quite hard for him to settle into a role when he's played very deep this year. He's played on the wing. He's played as number 10. I think he briefly had a period where he was playing almost like a false nine. And I think he's, he's still fairly young and I think he's still just trying to reach that elite level. And it must be quite tough for him to have a lot of responsibility and constantly be moved position to position from game to game. You know, sometimes playing three positions three times in a week. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree that it must be difficult. I mean, I also... I think he's. I think he's a nice guy, and I think he's got. Um, I do. I do feel like he feels like he's hard done by by everything at the moment, and whatever he could. I just think it's been one of those years, you know, those weird years where I think he was tired initially, uh, post the UEFA Nations, and then, uh, then never quite recovered his form. Then all the tweet stuff kicked off, which, I mean, it would get to me personally if that happened and I hadn't meant it, because um, I would probably be a little bit. I would have felt a bit insecure by that and would have shot some of my confidence. And then I guess as well, you know, a pandemic kicked in, didn't it? You know, so that's <laughs> kind of stuff that's going to like change your perspective of life. So I wouldn't do it as a case of just one of those weird years where mentally he's not been able to get it right. Um, do you have any concerns about uh, Bernardo Walter? Do you think it's just one of those seasons or how do you feel about it? All? <laughs> I'd, I'd just like to kick off by just giving him a 10 out of 10. You know, the way Torval and Dean used to hold up the cards like this for shit <laughs> <laughs> just holding his cup there. He did, he did look miserable during that, didn't he? He looked miserable before he was joining. Oh, yeah. Well, and so he should, really. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. But it was great. You know, just the amount of uh, nonsensical offence that it caused was, oh, yeah. was just fantastic. Uh, Bernardo Silva, uh, 
I have slightly a different, I, I think he was an absolute mug to send that tweet, an absolute mug. It's on social media. If he's got a, if he's got that type of relationship with uh, with Mendy, a WhatsApp, that's fine, you know, because yeah. that's between two mates. To send it out onto social media for the world to see, I'm sorry, you're just setting yourself up for a fall. Now we've got. Uh, I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he's racist in any way, shape, or form. I'm saying it was a stupid thing to do, and it caused, you know, it, it could cause offence to numerous millions of people. It's one of those things where I want to just like a slightly defend him in that aspect where I think there are societal differences that people don't tend to realise. I mean, for example, those sweets are sold pretty much across mainland Europe, you know, to points where no one even questions that. Like I've got, I, got I've got, I know some of the things I'm not like, I'm not, I would never send a million years send that. But at the same time, if, you, if someone comes over to a country and you're like, well, that's, those sweets are literally sold on the shelves in Europe. Why is it offensive? I think genuine misunderstanding. I think it's a very different societal norms I think over in Portugal. To pair, compared to the raw here because you can, I, I mean, I've literally, we all, you only go on holiday basically and you see something going, oh, that's a bit dodgy that, but you wouldn't get away with that in England, but you still go on holiday now and see that. I was only in Lisbon last year and I remember seeing with Nicola on the shelves and things going, there's no way that would get away in Europe. But if you lived in Portugal all your, all your life and you saw that on the shelf, you'd be like, oh, well, I didn't know that was offensive because you literally sell them here, if that makes sense. But I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying, I honestly don't think he thought he was doing anything wrong. You know, I don't think, I don't think no. he believed he was sharing a racial stereotype. So it must be not. I agree with you. you. I agree with you to, in many respects, but it was still a, you know, it was a, a stupid thing to do. Yeah. Do you know, once you, once you got started, you know, going into that ballpark, you know, um, I think it affected him for quite some time that uh, we've had a pandemic. I'd like just to give him a, one of my favourite things that he ever did was keep his Christmas tree up all year. <laughs> the only other person know, did, well, the only person who did that, I did it as a bet one time. And I'll tell you what, when it came to <laughs> take the Christmas tree down, I couldn't, I was like tearing it down. I just, I'd had, had absolute enough of it after a year. But it's um, Bernardo Silva's form. Sometimes as football, football fans as well, there's no grey areas. It's got to be either, you know, he's rubbish or he's world-class. Yeah. That and that, 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 that's not the, in the whole grand scheme of things, he's produced some moments of magical you know, ability this year, but it, it hasn't quite been up to that top. But we forget he's a young man as well, you know, and he's living in a different country. He's still finding his feet. You know, he's got a, an FA rap charge that came up that must have just shook his confidence a bit. Yeah. You know, it's, um, put it this way, I think we're all agreed he ain't going anywhere in the summer. No, not at all, because um, he's an absolute quality player. Guys, um, thanks for joining me for, for that discussion about the game. It's been Fox. loads and loads of fun. Go follow Alex and Walter on social. The, the, their Twitter handles will be at the start and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll be doing this again soon. Uh, do let us know what you made of the game down in the comments below, because um, I think it's easy to be emotional, but 24 hours later, it should be a little, should be, should be a little bit calmer. Now. Go watch my match reaction <laughs> video as well. Subscribe and all that kind of stuff, and we'll see you very, very soon. We Cheers, guys. We missed the best part of the uh, the best part of the game. What was that? That that Edison pass. Oh, oh go on. I mean, we're still rolling, so go for it. That was a hell of a pass, wasn't it? <laughs> he just. Uh, do, you, do you ever remember Robin Hood when he when he split the arrow? It was just like that through Southampton. Do you, do you he meant it? I thought he, I thought he meant to get a bit height on it, but kind of scuffed it a little bit. But he meant it. Let's, let's you know, it's one of them. Edison where, means uh, everything he does, doesn't he? <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a legend. But uh, that that to me. We don't see that very often in football, that kind of a pass. But yeah, that's my highlight. But thanks very much anyway. No, Edison, absolute legend, as is Alex and as is Walter. Guys, love your words. Oh. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. <laughs> Bye. Oh, you guys, you guys. Bye. <laughs> yeah.